Hey guys, Classic Homer here, welcoming you to my next play, Castlevania Circle of the Moon, the viewer's choice. That's right, this is the one that actually won the vote for my next LP thing I was doing, because I was taking that break and I felt like I should do something for the fans at least, if I'm going to be gone for as long as I was. Now, this is the first Castlevania that is in a Metroid style that was put to the Game Boy Advance. It's the second Metroidvania, if you want to call them that, or Castle Roids. And I think it's a great successor to what is commonly thought of as the best one ever, which was Symphony of the Night. Well, I like Symphony of the Night, but I actually prefer this game, even though it's technically inferior in, well, various ways. But this game is just so awesome. I mean, for a Game Boy Advance launch title, I mean, look at this. It's fantastic. The only problem with it was that on the actual Game Boy, it was hard as crap to see. Like, it was so dark you couldn't even make out anything unless you were, like, right under a streetlight. But in spite of those glaring flaws, I loved this game back in the day. And... Of course, at the beginning, Dracula has to be revived. Now, in this LP, I'm going to make an attempt to pick up all the HP and MP and heart max increases. And I have a uh, map that I've printed off from GameFAQs to do this with. And I'll try and put a link up in the description of this video for that. It's really helpful. And, hey! You got the heroes coming in right at the beginning to screw around Dracula. Now, if they're vampire killers, why do they only seal you? Eh. There's a very long Castlevania mythos that people can delve into. And no, they don't always just seal him. I think that's just what happened in Castlevania Bloodlines, which I think this is supposed to be a direct sequel to. Like, oh, holy shit! Yeah, Morris Baldwin here, I think, is one of the main characters in that game. And, you know, we have Q, who is his son. Obviously, as he calls him father. And we fall to our death. Oh, hey, we didn't die. Or even break our legs. Even though that was, you know, a ridiculous fall. At least ten stories, probably more. Well, if Dracula can brush us aside, at least we can brush aside ten story falls. Yeah, you go find him, because he is your dad. Wait, I won't be in the way. I'm going to help. I'm not going to just get out of here. Really, man. Just because he's your dad doesn't mean you have to be the only one that's concerned. He's my master, too. And, obviously, he likes me. I mean, he, he gave me the vampire killer whip. And look at this. It's freaking awesome. Oh, cool. Got the salamander card real fast. Now, there's a special magic system in the game they were just trying to introduce us to. And what this does is when we have two cards of, uh, well, opposing abilities, I guess you would say, you can cast a spell using them to power yourself or your whip up. Now, I only have one card right this second, so I can't cast any spells. But I'll get into that a little more in-depth when we actually find all the, uh, well, not all of them. God, we probably won't find all of them throughout the like, play of the game. But once we, you know, pick up a few more cards. Now, in this game, like in uh, Symphony of Night, now, you can also equip things. So, once I find some something to equip, I'll show off that menu as well. Ooh, sound like I got something in there. It's probably just an antidote. And, on top of being able to equip, like, Symphony of the Night, you can also level up, like, Symphony of the Night. And here we go, Mercury card. Whoa. Wow, that was close. I'm surprised I didn't get hit by that. And you see, the first thing we have is our DSS. So we have Mercury and Salamander. And we don't have a description, because I haven't cast a spell or figured out what it does yet. And items we can equip or use. We don't have anything to equip yet. Yeah, I got an antidote. Of course, that will cure poison. And the card area we can 
search through all of our different cards and read up on them. See, it just gives you a little bit of backstory about what the card actually is. And uh, the magic items is, are the things we get after we kill bosses. Now here's the save room. If you go to the save room and push up underneath the uh, big circle, you can recover all your HP and MP and of course save your game. Now let's see, cast our fire whip magic with mercury and salamander, and it powers our whip up a little bit. But it also puts the fire element on, so you find something like this bonehead here, who's strong to fire, and you aren't going to do a whole lot of damage to him. Now, we got our first sub-weapon here as well. A lot of new things the game... well, some of these things are new, but a lot of things the game's just going to throw at you right at the beginning. As far as tutorial stuff. Which is good. I mean, it's nice to get all this kind of crap out of the way. But, yeah, you have the sub-weapon push up and attack, and you'll use it. The knife is pretty crappy, though, so I don't expect to be using it very often. And, yes, if anyone's wondering, I do know about the uh, magic glitch. I'm not going to be exploiting it throughout this Let's Play, but I will show off all the spells in the game. In fact, here, I'll give a quick demonstration of it. So you see how I have Fire Whip right now? Well, if you pause the game mid-spell casting animation, and then come in here and switch what you're using, so let's say I go to here, and exit back out, I now have the uh, spell effects of it, those cards as if I actually had them. Now, this is overpowered, and I'm not going to take advantage of it, because it's just unfair. Because... What I just had there was the, uh, I think, Unicorn Whip, or Holy Whip, given by the Unicorn card, and it heals me every single time I swing. Which is really nice, but, well, I'll wait till I actually have the Unicorn card to take advantage of an ability like that. But, just let you guys know I'm not in the dark about it. <sighs> I walked right into that. Now, those dash boots we picked up, if you could read the screen, will make it so if you double tap forward you can dash. Ooh, a potion. Nice. Come on guys, get out of the way. Now sliding is really helpful when you're just faced with a bunch of weak enemies. But for the most part, you're going to be getting around using the dash boots. Now with this earth demon, I'm going to go ahead and cast our magic spell. Oh wow, look at that. You get right up in his face and you do way more damage. So that's pretty nice. A lot of cool things that you can do in this game that they just kind of hide in there. Now here's a hearts max increase, that's the first one we found. And there's another thing we can do up that hill that I ran away from, but uh, we can't do it until later. We don't have the correct abilities to take advantage of the secret passage up there, I guess you would say. Well, it's not really secret, it's just impassable right now. Now, I wish I was picking up some kind of equipment, because it's really nice to, you know, power yourself up with the stuff like that. The only problem I have with the equipment in this game is that you can't buy any, because there's no shop. So, that kind of sucks. And that was a HP max increase there I picked up. You get those, and they'll completely refill your HP, and they'll... Well, increase the maximum of it. Cool, level up. I think that makes us level 3 now. now I want to say there's something over here. Yep. Oh, nope, not that area. We can't slide through that hole because it's elevated. But if we come to this wall and smash it, we can find a secret passage. Holy shit! And I tried to slide underneath that bomb. I couldn't make it. They got an MP max increase. So, that's really helpful. You need all of those you can get, especially for later on when your spells become really powerful but really expensive. Of course, right now, at 6 MP per swing, my uh, Fire Whip is, well, it's relatively expensive for my level. And unfortunately, not that useful, only because there's so many fire-based enemies in here. Okay, so here is the second save point of the game, and here's where I'm going to stop this video. 
So, this is Classic Homer, signing out of Let's Play Castlevania Circle of the Moon. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good day.